Hey everyone, today we are going to learn how to make a stopwatch using JavaScript. When the user clicks on start button, the timer starts. The timer is set to an initial value of 00. zero. On clicking pause, the timer pauses and on clicking reset, the timer resets itself to its default value that is 00. zero. Now that we have seen the demo of the project, let us dive deep into how to create this project. First, we use the universal selector to apply some basic styles to all the elements on the page. The padding and margin are set to zero to remove any default margins. Moving on, we have some specific styles applied to the body element, which is just setting the background color to a light blue. Now coming to the HTML code, we have a div element with class container. This div holds the entire app. Inside the div, we have another div with the class name of timer display, which is where the timer will be displayed. We are also displaying the initial time inside this div. Below the timer display div, we have another div with class of buttons. The div consists of three buttons with different IDs that is pause timer, start timer and reset timer. Now going back to CSS, the container class is used to style a div that contains the entire timer app. It has a light blue background color. We set the position to absolute and use transform and left and right properties to center the container horizontally and vertically on the page. Next, we set its width to be minimum of 90% of the available space or 31.25 EM. Now, we give it some nice padding, border radius and a box shadow to give it a sleek look. Next, we use the timer class to style another div that shows the actual timer display. Here, I have mistakenly used the wrong class name. Let me fix it. Now, we set the position to relative. We set the width to 110%, which will cause it to overflow the container div slightly. It's positioned relatively and has some padding, font styles and a box shadow to make it stand out. Next, remove the timer display 5% to the right. I have calculated 5% by subtracting 100 from 110 and then dividing the output that is 10 by 2.
Next, the button class is used to style a div that contains the start, pause and reset buttons for the timer. It has some basic flex styles to position the buttons horizontally and some margin to give it some space from the top to the container div. Finally, we have some styles applied to the individual buttons themselves. They have some basic font and color styles, padding and a border radius to give them button-like appearance. However, for the start timer button, we set the background color to a different color. This makes the start button stand out as the primary action for the timer app. Now let us add this line of code into our HTML code. First, we initialize four variables for the timer, which is milliseconds, seconds, minutes, and hours. Next, we select the HTML element where we will display the timer using the query selector method and store it in the timer ref variable. Further, we set the initial value of interval variable int to null. We add an event listener to the HTML element with the ID start timer and specify a function to execute when the button is clicked. Now inside this function we check if the timer is already running and stop it before starting a new interval. We then start a new interval using the setInterval method and call the displayTimer function every 10 milliseconds. Now, in the next step, we define the display timer function which updates the timer variables and then updates the timer display using the inner HTML property of the timer ref element. Let me console log something just to check if the function works when we click on the start button. Uh, let me make some changes here. Okay, so let's check it. Let's click on the start button and here you can see uh, it works as console logged every 10 milliseconds. So yes, the display timer function is called every 10 milliseconds. Inside the display timer function, we increment the milliseconds variable by 10 and then check if it has reached 1000. If it has, we increment the seconds variable by 1 and reset, uh, reset the milliseconds variable to 0. 
in the similar manner we check if seconds variable has reached 60 and if it has we increment the minutes variable by 1 and reset the seconds variable to 0 we do the same for the minutes and hours variable We then add leading zeros to the timer values and update the timer display. We do so by using the pad start function. The pad start adds a single zero to the R minutes and seconds value if it is a single digit value. Also, it adds two zero to the milliseconds value if it is a single digit value and a single zero if it is a two digit value. We now use inner HTML and template literals to display the obtained values inside the timer display. Let us check if the start button really works. Uh, now let us write a function for the pause button. We add an event listener to the HTML element with the ID pause timer and specify a function to execute when the button is clicked. Now inside the function we stop the timer interval using the clear interval method. Let us also create a function for the reset button. So we add an event listener to the HTML element with an ID reset timer and specify a function to execute when the button is clicked. Inside the function we stop the timer interval using the clear interval method and reset all the timer variables to zero.
Finally, we update the timer display with the new values. And that's it. Your stopwatch is now ready. You can go ahead and customize it the way you want by changing fonts, colors, background colors and maybe even add some more functions to it. Uh, see you guys in the next tutorial. Till then, goodbye.